So uh, you're giving talks on no, Greece. Let's not talk about the talks. <laughs> no, no. Uh, uh, we, no. Okay, so, so Let, I, let's do it uh, tabula rasa okay. because also my views have changed. No, 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 no I, I know. Uh, uh, yes. Agreed. So, so um, um, Europe is in crisis, and so is Greece, uh, and the the crises are related to each other. Uh, I think that they're, they're very fr frightening, but maybe there's some promise in them as well. So perhaps you could uh, uh, explain to me how you see it. Yes. Uh, uh, so we start? We're, we're, we're going. going. Okay. Going. So yes, my interpretation is that there are um, interlocking crises. So there is definitely the financial or economic crisis so that is uh, the most visible and uh, commented on. But uh, underneath uh, or in relation, there is also what I would say constitutional crisis in Europe. Uh, there is also a geopolitical uh, crisis. Uh, and uh, the third is that um, there is what we might call uh, a kind of cultural or existential uh, crisis. Mm -hmm. So I would say that uh, the constitutional crisis uh, uh, that uh, emerged also became uh, predominant in the, in the, in the Greek issue. It has to do with the failure of constitutionalizing uh, the European integration that will have provided some mechanisms mm -hmm. uh, of uh, dealing with those kind of, uh, of situations that now they are missing and they created the facto institutions. The second uh, is the geopolitical crisis relates also with uh, the war in the Ukraine and Russia and uh, also with uh, the increasing number of irregular migrants that relates uh, uh, again with the question of uh, Islamophobia, the, the um, uh, militarization of, of some uh, uh, Islamist movements um, or persons uh, in Europe. And um, the, the existential crisis has to do with uh, the overall uh, political uh, and uh, social vision that uh, should uh, inform uh, Europe and uh, is missing. There is no vision anymore mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. Europe besides all these technical issues about austerity. So, you know, for me, given my political experience uh, of the, the relationship between Ukraine and what's going on in Greece, of course, is very, very interesting. Uh, uh, but the, um, the, the issue of political vision of Europe is actually surprising because in uh, East Central Europe, um, not East Central Southern Europe, uh, uh, in the former Soviet bloc, the, the uh, uh, Europe meant something and still means something, having to do with liberal democracy, uh, uh, free speech, you know, the whole litany of um, uh, democratic accomplishments. And uh, so, I mean, I understand the financial crisis presents real dilemmas, but uh, um, what it, is there a crisis in democracy? Should should uh, uh, and and how are uh, uh, I mean how is this how is Greece and Ukraine connected? Definitely, I think uh, there, there is a crisis in democracy, and uh, this became apparent uh, even in the last few months after the the, the recent elections in Greece. Mm -hmm. uh, the way that. Um, uh, the, the European, uh, the major European countries uh, reacted uh, mm -hmm. uh, to, to, the, to the argument of the new government that uh, since there, has, uh, there have been elections, a new government has been elected on a new agenda and there should be a change uh, of um, the, the policies uh, related to, to austerity, the reaction to this that there is no need to change anything independently of the change of uh, governments uh, is a symptomatic uh, of uh, the, the state of democracy, mm -hmm. at least in, in the Western uh, uh, geopolitical space of Europe. Uh, now, how it, uh, which means that uh, uh, the, what people vote uh, cannot uh, be considered anymore uh, as an mm -hmm. important factor uh, in how governments behave. Right. Right. And uh, especially uh, German officials and, uh, and politicians, but also intellectuals and journalists, uh, the way they commented is that um, the, the change of government should not affect uh, uh, the, the way that uh, Europe uh, addresses uh, this kind of uh, problems related to financial uh, or economic issues. So I, I think that's the first time that we hear something uh, like that uh, in Europe about democracy, that electoral outcomes have no effect uh, on uh, governmental uh, mm -hmm. uh, decisions. Uh, now, how the, 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 the crisis in, in, in the Ukraine um, uh, affects Greece, so all it affects uh, uh, Greece with the, with the embargo. 
the embargo the, uh, of, of Russia. Of Russia, that has affected uh, and deteriorated uh, the Greek economy, uh, given that uh, Greece um, was very important, uh, a major country of uh, uh, agricultural exports. Mm -hmm. uh, and now this is uh, foreclosed. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, one uh, simple uh, indication of how this affects, but uh, uh, also the, the search is, uh, is, is searching uh, for uh, multiple alliances. Uh, and uh, in, the, in, in other times, uh, um, Russia could have been a legitimate uh, uh, potential partner, uh, and because of the crisis, now also this uh, has been in a, in a foreclosed. So uh, the, the diplomatic, uh, uh, the diplomatic um, uh, possibilities uh, uh, of, of the, the Greek government are uh, limited now. So, so, so the, the uh, uh, democratic landscape or the uh, deficiency of democracy landscape it, it is really quite ironic uh, and tragic be, because uh, um, I will declare as someone who has some expertise in Russia and Ukraine that uh, democracy in Russia is being radically compromised by Putin, that there's a continuity between the KGB and, and uh, Putin's uh, governing practices. Uh, um, and uh, and the embargo had made some sense in, in those terms as that internal democratic deficiency has actually led to imperial behavior in Ukraine using arguments that sound an awful like arguments that were made uh, 60 years ago. Yes. Um, um, so so uh, there, there, there is reason for that embargo on democratic grounds, but then I, I think you're absolutely right. If uh, uh, the citizens of countries can't, of polities, can't actually have an impact on the direction of uh, their uh, uh, government policy, um, then what is democracy? They, you know, the, the most minimalist uh, definition of democracy is compromised in, in, in the Greek uh, um, uh, EU, but especially German relationship. Yes, there is an example uh, in relation to what you said. For, for instance, uh, uh, before the, the recent visit of uh, the Greek Prime Minister in, in Russia last week, uh, there was a visit by the Italian Prime Minister mm -hmm. in Russia. And uh, this visit was not even commented, uh, not to say criticized. Mm -hmm. uh, but as soon as the Greek Prime Minister went to Russia, it was presented as a scandal. Mm -hmm. uh, that, uh, that Greece foreign policy uh, threatens uh, the entire uh, um, uh, construction of, uh, of, of uh, European unity because uh, it shows forms of uh, divergence and uh, uh, internal differences in the European Union. But uh, 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 as I understand it, the Greek government uh, wants uh, not only to uh, increase some uh, potential economic gains uh, from, uh, from Russia or from uh, um, a, a kind of uh, diplomatic ties uh, with Russia, but also wants to play uh, a role between Russia and the European Union. Mm -hmm. And uh, to increase its uh, geopolitical uh, importance uh, uh, by inserting itself between these two spaces rather than uh, siding with one or the other. So this, I think, uh, a new uh, kind of foreign policy uh, that is emerging uh, in Greece now. Mm -hmm. uh, to understand uh, its role uh, as mediating in this period of conflict uh, between Russia and Europe, uh, rather than uh, going to, to, to Russia to ask for money mm -hmm. um, or, or to try to um, uh, bypass uh, its existing European agreements. Yeah. So, 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 I mean, this is really strange because, uh, um, you know, the financial crisis at its root has to do with the very, very deep problem of the economic union you know, uh, of Europe, you know, that, that uh, Greece doesn't have the instruments it needs to, as a sovereign polity, to actually address its, uh, the economic crisis. It, it could have inflation yes. internally, and, and that would be a way of resolving the issue uh, uh, relatively justly. Yes. Uh, uh, but because it can't do that, um, and, and on the other hand, uh, the, the European, you know, Brussels, uh, and particularly uh, Berlin, uh, is not willing simply to invest in Greece uh, to uh, relieve it of its debt and so forth, which also would work as a way of resolving. So we agree on that. Uh, the, uh, the policies of austerity in, uh, at times of um, uh, 
depression make no no sense at all. It's kind of contrary to economics 101, and and you know that that's just very very serious technical problem. But um, um, this and the geopolitical one it seems to me to be kind of real politics. You know that 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 Greece is trying to look for some leverage, and Russia provides it, even though it doesn't. Uh, it can't really make very great claims, of, uh, democratic claims, that it's uh, uh, doing anything. It's just a sensible thing for the Greek, uh, the Greek authorities to be doing that because it's put, been put into this impossible uh, uh, situation. But, you know, you're interested in constitutions uh, and constitution making. And uh, it seems to me that the uh, Greek sovereignty and the constitution of the Greek polity is... Um, uh, very severely challenged in these circumstances, as is um, the sovereignty and constitutionality of, the Euro of Europe. And uh, as an, uh, a very creative uh, thinker about such things, I wonder not only what your diagnosis is, but uh, what, um, what, uh, what sort of medicine are you would you uh, advise the patients taking? Like, what, what way uh, do you see any way out of this? This is the, the, the most uh, uh, complex uh, but also timely question. Um, Greece, since, uh, since the beginning of the, of the crisis and especially uh, after the uh, new loans that were, they were provided, uh, uh, is in a situation of a kind of informal uh, state of exception mm -hmm. in uh, multiple ways, in the way that uh, the constitution uh, has been violated uh, in the name uh, of uh, a national economic crisis, so someone can speak here of an economic state of exception, uh, but uh, also in the way that um, especially the previous government since the crisis uh, have governed uh, by, by passing uh, even the Supreme Court's uh, decisions mm -hmm. uh, about many austerity measures that uh, they were uh, considered to be anti-constitutional. Now, with uh, the new government, uh, there is a sense of uh, a kind of a renewal of the democratic le legitimacy, although it's, uh, it's very early to say what uh, will be the outcome. So definitely in the last five years, um, the constitutional order of Greece uh, has been uh, put into test and uh, has been compromised. And uh, if one adds uh, uh, that within uh, uh, those years, it's uh, uh, when uh, the neo-Nazi party emerged uh, mm -hmm. uh, and grew and played an important role in, in shaping uh, um, uh, Greek politics, then definitely we're speaking about a constitutional crisis uh, uh, that is added to the political crisis uh, uh, we're witnessing in Greece. Now, what is uh, to be done? Uh, this is, uh, I think, a question that um, cannot be really answered. But as things stand now, and uh, having uh, uh, already two months uh, of um, uh, the, the new government in power, its negotiations uh, uh, with uh, the Eurozone, it seems to me that uh, we are um, uh, heading toward uh, uh, a very dilemmatic uh, uh, situation. Uh, uh, with the dilemma. A, de yeah. a, a, a dilemmatic, yes, yeah. in, in the sense that uh, either on the one hand uh, the, the, the new government will have to compromise and to capitulate, uh, which, which will mean that uh, new, the, 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 the austerity measures will continue in a different form, but it will be the continuation of the uh, policies of the previous governments, uh, or the, the, the Greek government will um, uh, uh, remain uh, uh, in a sense, um, uh, stronger in its existing positions, uh, uh, and uh, that will lead uh, to a, um, a form of conflict, a clash, uh, and uh, possibly um, uh, an exit from the Eurozone. Mm -hmm. uh, in other words, I don't see what uh, might have been the case uh, uh, in the previous weeks and months of a possible compromise among both sides. Mm -hmm. It looks to me that uh, either uh, uh, Greece uh, will have to uh, return back uh, to the existing policies or uh, to continue this kind of uh, confrontation, uh, uh, trying to support uh, its own uh, uh, electoral uh, promises that uh, will not be accepted by the Eurozone and uh, then we are going to witness something in the news. From New York, uh, at, uh, 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 using the voice 
of the outsider appraising the situation. Now, I happen to know that you, you feel uh, some connection to the leaders of Syriza, and uh, I wonder, you know, uh, are you pleased with what's happened, they've done thus far? Uh, what are you worried about? And, uh, you know, if the, these are the two choices, which, which choice do you want your colleagues, friends, uh, comrades to, uh, to make? Yes, this is uh, the existential dimension <laughs> yeah, yeah. Of, of, of the political problem. First of all, um, I, I, was, um, uh, I was not uh, a long supporter of, of Syriza. Uh -huh. I, 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 I supported them uh, uh, since uh, 2012, mm -hmm. um, but in, informally, uh, so I don't have ties with the party uh, or any movement uh, that uh, constitutes uh, uh, this party. So my position remains, uh, in a sense, external. But, 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 but my guess is that you, if you voted, you voted for them. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. I did yeah. vote it repeatedly yeah. Yeah. Uh, in the last uh, in the last uh, elections. Um, uh, but uh, on the other hand, uh, uh, I think that uh, we shouldn't uh, harbor any kind of um, uh, revolutionary um, uh, romanticism about uh, Syriza. Uh, as I have said uh, several times in the last weeks, uh, Syriza is not a revolutionary party. Mm -hmm. And uh, although sometimes, uh, especially abroad, uh, there is uh, a kind of enthusiasm uh, about uh, this new government, uh, I don't share it. And I didn't share it even when uh, I, I voted for them and I supported them. So for me it is uh, uh, a reformist party, uh, a neo-Kensian party with a strong uh, uh, internal uh, uh, communist uh, opposition, that's true, but uh, its main, uh, its main uh, uh, political identity is to reinvent uh, in one way or another uh, a more democratic uh, uh, welfare state. Mm -hmm. So it is in a sense in the left of social democracy, but uh, has not uh, cut its ties uh, with uh, the social democratic past. So the radical dimension uh, of, of Syriza uh, has been, uh, in a sense, uh, either uh, uh, artificially or because of the circumstances inflated. Uh, inflated because uh, Europe has taken such a neoliberal and conservative turn that uh, even uh, a, a new kind of social democratic party appears to them uh, as uh, extremely radical. This is the, the tragic paradox in Europe today, that uh, a, a kind of moderate um, a leftist party is presented uh, as a, a revolutionary threat to the uh, European order. So this says a lot about uh, the, the actual uh, direction uh, that uh, Europe uh, has taken. Uh, having said that, um, uh, given the circumstances, uh, uh, there is uh, uh, a positive uh, and important role for Syriza to play. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be uh, that if it succeeds uh, in whatever scenario, it might generate uh, or trigger uh, a reaction or an end uh, against or an end to austerity policies in Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, historically, I think uh, the Syriza's um, uh, uh, rise to power uh, has uh, some uh, novelties that have to be taken into account. First of all, it's the first party that has been elected against austerity, and the austerity party that has been elected during the crisis. So it's, it has a kind of, uh, of primacy. In Europe? In Europe, yes, yeah. definitely. Yeah, because I, I, I think one of the terrible ironies, even though Obama gets criticized uh, very uh, uh, vociferously by, by the left, is that American policies have been anti-austerity Exactly. Policies. No, no, this is, so, yes. so, you know, I mean, it's, it, 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 it's one of the strange things, what is commonsensical for a moderate Democrat uh, is looks in, in North America looks radical in Europe. Yes, uh, the, the, the case uh, the case of Obama would be probably um, would be seen as uh, again a, a very radical option uh, uh, within the uh, the existing uh, European context and the disagreements uh, between Germany and uh, and uh, the United States on economic policy. Uh, is this, yeah, yes. yeah, this, it's, it's, yes. It's, yeah, so I agree with you that the, that, that Syriza is not, uh, uh, that, that its position is actually almost a conventional uh, uh, neo-Keynesian position. Uh, uh,
But do you do you think that there's a radical alternative in the pre present circumstance? And and then my provocative question to you is, if not now, when? It, exactly. it, it seems that this is the this is if there's any time for really consequential radical politics in Europe, uh, uh, it's the situation of, of Greece. Exactly. This is uh, the, the pertinent question at the moment. Uh, I'm more inclined to think uh, lately that um, uh, perhaps intentions do not matter so much. Uh, but uh, what, uh, what uh, might, be, uh, might prove to be uh, really uh, constitutive of a new change are accidents. Mm -hmm. So maybe accidentally uh, Syriza might play uh, a very important political role in Europe rather than intentionally. Uh, Europe is a, a pro-European uh, party that also has uh, strong ties uh, to, to, lead to the left of uh, social democracy. But on the other hand, given uh, the reaction and the economic war that now it's waged uh, against Greece, it may uh, initiate uh, some unpredictable situations that could uh, lead uh, to, to radical changes. My, my concern is that the radical changes will uh, not be the kind of radical changes that you uh, uh, dream of, but more the radical changes that uh, Putin Acts. Yes, sir. so let's see what, uh, how I understand uh, the, the different possibilities, the different mm -hmm. scenario, uh, scenarios. So let's assume that uh, the, the Greek cap uh, government capitulates under the pressure, mm -hmm. uh, especially the economic uh, and diplomatic pressure of, uh, of, of Brussels uh, and uh, Berlin. In that, uh, in that case, uh, as I see it, uh, the party will uh, probably split up. It's very likely that uh, the left opposition that represents a third percent uh, will leave the party. If this happens, uh, it will be diff very difficult uh, for uh, the new government uh, to retain uh, the, uh, the support uh, and the confidence of right. the parliament. Mm -hmm. So most probably it's that uh, the, uh, the, the, the government will fall. And in addition to that, uh, it will definitely lose uh, the, the majority of, uh, of uh, the Greek population mm -hmm. uh, that uh, wanted to see a change in relation to the state measures uh, that related to the last election. So uh, if uh, 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 the Eurozone uh, under the hegemony of Germany succeeds uh, in domesticating uh, the, the existing government, uh, then um, uh, we will uh, have uh, a, 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 a very intense political crisis. Uh, most probably the government will fall like all the previous ones uh, uh, did. And uh, new elections, uh, and uh, in that case, uh, it's very likely also to see uh, a resurgence uh, of uh, the right, mm -hmm. uh, both uh, in its uh, moderate version and its extreme uh, uh, neo Nazis one, uh, maybe also a kind of uh, alliance between the two. Uh, everything is possible, but uh, it, will, uh, it will signify the defeat of the left uh, mm -hmm. uh, if it accepts, if the government accepts. Uh, uh, the, the austerity measures and the neoliberal restructuring that is proposed uh, uh, by the Eurozone. Now, on the other hand, uh, uh, if uh, it uh, resists uh, and uh, decides uh, to uh, declare, uh, let's say, an, an open opposition, uh, then uh, it's very likely that uh, Greece will default. Uh, in one way or another, it will have to exit the Eurozone, although we don't know exactly how that will happen because there are no legal mechanisms uh, and what that will mean. And then uh, we have, uh, uh, I think, two possibilities, uh, given uh, uh, the, the situation of crisis that will be caused by the economic inability of the, of the state uh, uh, to address uh, uh, a series of uh, issues. Uh, one is um, uh, the radicalization of the left and left movements. Uh, that uh, will take the opportunity of the weakening of the government and the state uh, in uh, uh, pushing for more uh, socialist uh, uh, agenda. Uh, or, on the other hand, um, it, will go, it can lead to a militarization of the extreme right, will also mm -hmm. might exploit uh, uh, these moments of, of disorder and um, uh, instability and uh, try to get the upper hand. In, in both uh, issues, I think uh, we are going to, to witness um, uh, an extreme intensification of uh, uh, political conflicts mm -hmm. uh, in a situation uh, of uh, uh, relative decline, both economic, political and institutional, with a weak state, 
lack of support from, uh, from Europe and uh, a new geopolitical uh, uh, reality for Greece, uh, losing its traditional uh, uh, place uh, uh, in Europe uh, and uh, uh, looking for uh, other allies. In that case, um, uh, we might even uh, uh, see an intensification to the degree of uh, a low civil war in Greece, uh, uh, given that uh, there has been um, a kind of uh, a political violence going on uh, in the last years, uh, that uh, might open up uh, uh, either uh, possibilities for the best uh, or for the worst. But in this case, I think, uh, and if one takes into account, of course, uh, as one should, uh, um, uh, the uh, difficult situation that uh, Greek society will find itself in uh, with a default, uh, it's unavoidable that it will be a moment of uh, uh, economic um, uh, difficulty for the Greeks. But on the other hand, it might lead to windows of possibility that otherwise I don't see. So although I was, uh, until uh, uh, the last weeks, uh, uh, more sympathetic uh, to the idea of a compromise between the Greek government uh, and the Eurozone, uh, lately with um, uh, what has been happening in the so-called negotiations and the, the economic war that has been waged, I think that uh, um, a, a default and the next from the Eurozone uh, politically might be more um, uh, useful uh, for the future uh, of Greece uh, and more hopeful, despite the fact that I recognize that it will be a very risky situation. Well, you know, I, I always worry about uh, cracking eggs to cook an omelet. And, and, and you, know, it, it, it's, uh, you know, given the, uh, uh, you know, the, the trajectories, uh, you know, the tendencies around the world, uh, the, the, the possibilities of disorder and chaos um, are very, very frightening. And you know what I would hope, uh, just listening to your kind of clear analysis, is that at that moment of uh, apparent exit, that maybe some enlightened uh, uh, judgment would be coming externally. I, I, I really can see meaning from Berlin and Brussels. You know, I I, I can really see how. The, the, the Greek political actors um, are, in fact, in uh, facing a severe dilemma, and, and uh, any decision uh, leads to very undesirable uh, circumstances. Especially if you don't hold, as I don't, um, kind of uh, uh, un, uh, imagination to see what kind of economic order can replace, uh, systemically replace the present one. You know, this is something that we've always talked about. I, I really don't think there's a systemic alternative to capitalism. I think that there are uh, capitalisms and more humane and less humane capitalism that includes socialist projects within it, but a, a completely different kind of economy is very, very hard for me to imagine. Yes, uh, you, you, I think you put it correctly with the eggs, but I think there are uh, three kinds of omelets that are being cooked now. And now we're talking about eggs. Maybe, maybe exactly. we'll close, close over the cooking lesson. Yes, there are three omelets uh, that are being uh, cooked right now. The first is uh, the neoliberal one, that uh, also it breaks eggs. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, it's already broken. Eggs. And, uh, all, yes, yeah. uh, many eggs have been all, already broken. They want to break more yeah. uh, in order to, to restructure the country according to... Uh, to the neoliberal dictates. Mm -hmm. So there, there are also many eggs and uh, a lot of suffering um, uh, that has been, uh, uh, let's say, uh, diffused in five years. So it no, it, it's not a, a particular uh, a moment, uh, but right. uh, it has a kind of um, a temporal uh, diffusion. Uh, then, uh, the slow, ag slow agony. Slow agony and slow, maybe slow death. Uh, the, the second uh, egg uh, will be the um, uh, neo-Nazi egg. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be much more violent, uh, uh, will take, uh, will resurrect uh, all the nightmares uh, uh, of, uh, of the last century in the European continent. Uh, that will be the worst egg of all, uh, uh, the, the, wor the, the worst um, uh, omelette of all. Yeah. But uh, it will relate also with the first one, mm -hmm. uh, in a kind of um, uh, paradoxical uh, uh, balance. And then uh, there is the, uh, the left wing uh, uh, omelette uh, that uh, I think it's the most... Uh, uh, Tasted. <laughs> uh, taste the most uh, uh, hopeful, but again, uh, it will require uh, cutting some eggs as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, I don't see any other option. 
Uh, I cannot see um, uh, I mean, because the, I will tell the, you what, the absence of option is if you focus on the Greek actors. There are other options if uh, Europe acts in a more uh, rational fashion. Yes, but I, I don't think this is a moment of rationality for yeah. Europe in the sense that uh, if the, the Europe compromises and accepts some of the neo Keynesian uh, mm -hmm. demands of the Greek government, it might create, and they know it well, it might create a domino effect. Yes. It might lead to, to a, a quick and sudden changes of government this is in my the happy south ending. periphery. Yeah. It will be, but yeah. uh, that will, uh, and also it will put yeah. into, um, it will question and challenge uh, uh, the German uh, hegemonic uh, yes. economic uh, project. And uh, uh, it's very difficult for me to, to, to see what kind of rationality uh, might succeed. Because uh, it is also rational from the point of view uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, Brussels and Berlin now to try to um, uh, end. Uh, uh, a, a political and economic change that may uh, yeah. cha uh, 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 challenge their, uh, yeah, their uh, therefore, hegemony and interests. Yeah, therefore, what, now is the time when some people in Brussels and Berlin are openly talking about a Greek exit. You know, exactly. You know, the, and, and that's part of yeah. the pressure yeah. that's yes. exercised yeah. for the next yeah. weeks that right. supposedly right. are uh, so important. On the other hand, uh, it's very rational uh, um, uh, from the point of view of the Greek government uh, to accept uh, uh, the dictates uh, of uh, the Eurozone uh, that will uh, destroy the party, uh, will probably undermine the government, uh, and they will uh, be over, uh, overthrown. Mm -hmm. So we are confronted here with the different, we might say rationalities, we might, we might call it also irrationalities, but uh, there are definitely different forces that uh, at this moment uh, they cannot, I don't see them how they con can coexist uh, in a kind of uh, Hegelian synthesis or compromise. Mm -hmm. I, I don't see that. Mm -hmm. And because uh, in one case uh, you have a power block uh, that uh, has a tremendous uh, um, uh, force, uh, and on the other hand you have one uh, problematic small peripheral country, uh, it's more likely that uh, Europe will press on its uh, demands, uh, and uh, the question is how the Greek government uh, will respond. Yeah, but, my, but my, you know, there's this the other side of it that there may be this uh, an alternative domino effect. So you you cut one country out of the uh, uh, EU and, and uh, of the uh, Euro zone, and uh, it, it it could lead to Italy next, Spain next, uh, uh, maybe even Definitely. France. So, 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 I mean, that, that, that's yes. for them, let's call them them, uh, this is very dangerous too. It's very dangerous. Yeah. I think all options are dangerous for all the different players and actors. Uh, the question is what is um, uh, best for um, a radical uh, left project? Uh, that, uh, again, it's not a revolutionary one. It, it will not transform the capitalist, it will not overcome yeah. or uh, um, uh, transcend capitalist economy and replace with another, but uh, uh, it will uh, try to um, uh, replicate the idea of uh, a kind of uh, more um, uh, human uh, capitalism uh, with the protection of some social rights uh, that today in, in, in Europe appear as uh, uh, radical uh, uh, demands, although they are two, not. Two okay. uh, final things. Uh, Andrew told me that you had some interesting things to say about immigration, to say about, uh, migration. the problems of uh, in immigrants and uh, the role they play. In this. Yes, first of all, uh, uh, one uh, needs to, um, to take into account uh, that uh, uh, in this uh, uh, political and historical moment in Europe, uh, Syriza has taken uh, uh, the most uh, radical position regarding uh, irregular migrants. Mm -hmm. uh, they are going to vote now a law that um, will uh, we give uh, uh, citizenship to approximately 200,000 uh, second generation migrants. It was time. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, also uh, it has uh, uh, attempted uh, to uh, close down uh, detention camps for, uh, for uh, uh, irregular migrants. And now, uh, very recently, uh, just uh, uh, today, they have um, uh, decided uh, to provide uh, a travel, legal travel papers uh, to all uh, uh, Syrian refugees uh, so they can go to Europe and not be stuck uh, 
uh, in Greece. So I think that uh, when it comes to, to, the to the question of migration and also to irregular migration, Syriza is in the vanguard of the progressive forces uh, in Europe, and probably it will also be punished uh, by Europe because of that. But my position, uh, I think it uh, goes a bit beyond uh, what is the official policy of, uh, of the new government. Uh, I, I do believe that, uh, uh, especially if uh, there is um, uh, an exit of Greece uh, from the Eurozone, uh, Syriza should immediately provide uh, a Greek citizenship uh, to all irregular migrants uh, or to most uh, irregular migrants uh, uh, that are in, uh, in the Greek soil and also to the uh, legal migrants that they wish uh, to acquire uh, citizenship. And why I have this idea, knowing all the problems associated with, uh, with migration in Europe? Because first, uh, it will uh, uh, transform radically the composition of, uh, of the Greek demos. Uh, it will break uh, this nationalistic fantasy that uh, is haunting uh, uh, Greece again uh, after many decades. And uh, also it will be able to integrate uh, into Greek politics uh, segments, uh, new segments uh, of, um, uh, of populations uh, that uh, can uh, uh, use their uh, newly found uh, radicalism in order to reinvent uh, uh, what uh, Greek politics and European politics may be. I think uh, uh, such a radical measure also will uh, 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 marginalize uh, uh, the, the extreme right uh, and uh, the conservative nationalist uh, uh, right, because then they will be on the defense, they will have uh, lost their uh, initiatives. And uh, for the, uh, the uh, another reason, one last reason that's more uh, uh, instrumental, but it's important to, uh, to keep in mind and not to be afraid to state it, it will change the, comp the composition of the Greek electorate. Mm -hmm. So the, the left uh, will create uh, a new uh, a social body of uh, potential voters uh, that uh, will uh, support uh, this government and this uh, uh, party for a very long time. So I think it will have, in a sense, uh, quasi-revolutionary uh, uh, implications at the level of the symbolic, uh, the national, the political, and the social, and the class structure of, uh, of Greece, uh, by also um, uh, weakening uh, uh, the, the position now of, uh, of, of the nationalist right in Greece. So uh, my ideas uh, are not very conventional in Greece, but I think that they make sense, uh, and from a political point of view, they point uh, to uh, changes uh, that might not uh, be reproduced within the existing uh, uh, political system as we know it. So I, 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 there's a tremendous irony that this position actually is a mirror image of the Republicans' understanding of the Democrats and especially Obama's yes. uh, immigration policies. You know, they imagine that the reason why Obama is being open to, more open, not completely open, but more open to uh, uh, migrants, both conventional and unconventional, uh, is to actually increase the Democratic constituent, the, the yes. constituent of the Democratic Party. Uh, but, but I, you know, I really appreciate, uh, you know, anything that undermines uh, uh, the conventional nation state and its imagination, you know, the, the, you know, the ethno uh, state, yes. uh, uh, which is, uh, you know, a great drug of Europe, uh, uh, I appreciate. And it's especially good. now in Europe, uh, that uh, this drug is becoming more and more uh, uh, used uh, yeah. uh, compared, let's say, to 20 or 30 years yeah. ago. Remember, my daughter is in France, yes. I, know, I know this very, very well. So, so um, um, I think I'm just going to thank you, uh, and, and we can call this the end, unless you want to say something about uh, uh, what revolutionary prospects um, uh, you see. Uh, because, I mean, as, I, as we chat and about this concrete crisis, uh, the revolutionary prospect still seems to be a, a kind of black box, a, a, an empty box. I don't. I know that you you're committed to that, but you know, it, it, if it ever had started having some colors and contours, it should be now. So, if you wanted to say a word or two about yes, that. Uh, my. my and uh, we will end here, but my position is, uh, in that sense, quite different from yours. Um, yes. Uh, <laughs> although I don't harbor any fascination. Uh, 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 or romantic feelings uh, about disorder and instability. I do believe that there are historical moments uh, uh, where uh, particular um, imperatives uh, uh, are imposed. 
uh, and define politics. So um, in this very specific uh, concrete uh, historical moment, uh, uh, my impression is uh, that instability might be more promising for uh, a, a revolutionary change by accident than uh, uh, traditional uh, reformist uh, politics uh, uh, that might just reproduce the same. So it's just uh, a way to understand uh, the existing uh, political dynamics uh, in Greece and in Europe. Given the closure that has been established by the neoliberal project that is also uh, supported by the um, center-left and the center-right, and the lack of um, uh, mobilization by European uh, populations, it is only by accidental causes uh, that uh, radical changes may happen in this historical uh, situation. This is not a general model, but when you don't have revolutionary agents, when you have such asymmetrical power relations, uh, radical changes uh, for the better can happen um, in a more um, uh, accidental uh, and uh, unpredicted and unintended way. It's what uh, probably Ma uh, Machiavelli would have called uh, the moment of Fortuna. So I think that Fortuna presence uh, is becoming uh, more central today than the dimension of Vertu that uh, is for normal politics. Although I'm very aware of, uh, of the risks and uh, the, possi the possible uh, uh, problems that this might cause uh, in the um, uh, short term uh, uh, in Greek society and uh, uh, in Europe. But uh, as things are now, the choice would be either this uh, neoliberal barbarism that uh, threatens uh, whatever has been left of democracy, or uh, an accidental uh, uh, trigger that uh, might uh, mobilize and create uh, a new dynamism that uh, we haven't seen and we have not predicted, like uh, what happened in Eastern Europe, although in a different direction, that was neither predicted uh, nor intentional, and it created uh, a dynamic on its own. Maybe it's uh, uh, the time for, the, for radical um, egalitarian and democratic politics uh, uh, to become uh, also subject to, to a kind of uh, accidental change. Okay, so as you can imagine, uh, there's much I, uh, I, uh, I could respond in, uh, 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 I could immediately respond and then you would respond and we would go on with this conversation. Uh, instead, I'm going to propose that uh, we uh, leave it, that you had to, the last word at this time, but that it's actually a proposition for further discussions, maybe inviting other people uh, along with us to talk about this moment of Fortuna question. It would be my pleasure, given also that uh, historical temporality uh, it has become so fast, but also we should not uh, um, forget that uh, in seven days we have the, the beginning of the trial uh, of the Neonazis party mm -hmm. in, uh, in, uh, in Athens, so we can also intro uh, include uh, uh, this subject uh, in our uh, conversation for the future. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for the invitation.